Welcome back, my fellow Helldivers. Thank you for joining us today. I am in the studio by myself. Old Dutch Butters is on vacation. So I will be tackling this podcast all by myself. Thank you guys for watching. The growth on this channel has been incredible. We have a bunch of topics that we want to talk about, and I'll let you know what they are right now so you know what's in store for this video. I can't call it a podcast because I don't have anybody to bounce off of, so it's just a video, and we're just going to make it. Uh, we've got our major orders recently on the bot side have been completed, at least one of them. And now we have a choice that only Helldivers can make. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second. We also will be talking about the new patch that's coming out on Thursday, along with the new War Bond, the Viper Commandos. Um, lots of cool stuff in the works, on the way. It'll be dropping this week. So unfortunately, it didn't drop on Tuesday today. Otherwise, I'd be able to talk about it. It's going to be uh, on it's going to be on Thursday, which is fine. I'll just have to make another video on Thursday. Uh, and then obviously when Dutch Butters comes back next Tuesday, we'll have a little bit of playtime with the new patch and the new war bonds and all that stuff. So we'll have some more thoughts and some more feedback on how that's all going. We're also going to be featuring two, two loadouts of the week this week, basically because I just can't talk to myself for that long. Um, our Discord community has been incredible, and uh, we've got a chat in there dedicated to just giving us recommended builds, and I want to turn that into a thing. I want to turn it into something that we celebrate, uh, so I look forward to showing you that segment coming up in just a few more minutes. That being said, let's get back to it. We are marching towards Cyberstan. Uh, the last major order to take Wasat has been completed by the skin of our teeth. I did not know if we were actually going to do this. There's a there's something happens. Whenever there's a bot side major order, uh, it's always a struggle because there's still a good portion of the player base that just hangs out on the bug side because they don't like fighting bots or bots are too difficult or they have issues with the spawn rates. There's, there's all kinds of excuses why they don't like going to the bot side. But recently, we've actually seen a good portion of people and we've gotten some comments, thankfully, in our own chat and our, our community tab here on, on YouTube that says people were like, you look, I normally fight bugs, but you know what? I felt like I needed to do something, so I came over to the bot side to help out with the MO. Thank you. Thank you so much. We need more of that. We need people to collectively come together and say, you know what? doesn't matter where the MO is. That's where I'm going. Because as a bot fighter, as somebody who always likes to fight bots by default, if there's no major order or if the major order's already been completed, I will default to the bot side. That's where I love it. That's where this game shines for me. Uh, I don't like fighting bugs. It's not my jam. But when there's an MO for bugs, I always do my part. I'm always on the way over there. I always like to at least do run a bunch of missions on the planet that needs to be liberated or or the campaign that needs to be done, whatever, like the, the, the Black Hole in Meridia. Like, I'm always there ready to go. Uh, I love the fact that I'm seeing more of the player base start to do the same thing for the bot side. Um, now, with these new fixes coming up on Thursday, hopefully it'll be a little bit more approachable for people who don't normally fight bots to be able to go to the bot side and play and, and fight the automatons and help us get to Cyberstan. Um, there's also, I want to kind of mix in the uh, a couple of the ideas that the, the patch is going to be putting into effect is this new galactic map, the new details on the galactic map. Um, I think this is going to help massively when it comes to players knowing where to go and what is actually the best route to get to where they're trying to go so that we can accomplish more ma major orders uh, as a group. Um, so right now, a majority of the high of the hardcore players will, will check out this app. It's the uh, Helldivers 2 companion app where basically it has a galactic map and it has it all completely broken down. It shows you the routes that you have to go to get to each planet, how to weaken particular defense missions, how to, uh, how to, get the fast, like I said, the fastest route to each planet that you need to get to, the trade routes, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and it also gives you a detailed uh, description of the planet itself and its liberation percentage. So like every time uh, we have a mission on the ground, we've got Helldivers down there, that counts as a certain percentage towards winning that planet. But the planet's defense or the, the automaton's front or the bug front, it has a certain percentage that it fights back at. So as long as we can beat that percentage that it's fighting back at, we can liberate that planet. This information is completely missing from the game itself. Now, I think, I don't know for sure, but I think it sounds like they're moving towards, they're going to have that information included in the game to help kind of, I don't want to say educate, but it helps educate the player base like, oh, this is what we're actually doing. This is how we win. 
um, a big issue. I think a lot of people just don't know don't know where to go. They don't know what planet needs what. They just see a little icon on top of it and they dive to that one. But that might not be the best way to accomplish the major order. Hopefully this changes. Um, the companion app is great and it's cool and I, I actually really like using it. But having that information in game would be invaluable for the player base. I think it'll really help our organization and it'll help us to accomplish these missions. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing that happen in game. It's going to be cool. Um, that being said, we now have a choice. And this is kind of dark, but it fits perfectly with this game's humor. So the choice is, so we have, there's two planets that we have to get to. But first we have to liberate a Sir Pass. Once that's done, then we can make our way to, and I'm going to pull up the actual app right now. I'm going to pull up the, uh, so on Marfark, Marfark, however you want to say it, my fart, um, the, the ever impending anti-tank mines are on that planet. If we go to that planet, we get the anti-tank mines if we liberate it. But if we go to Vernon Wells, we get to save sick children from hospitals. <laughs> So the game is literally saying either you choose saving sick children from, from hospitals that are being taken over by the automatons, or you say, F those kids, and you go after these anti-tank mines, which nobody wants. <laughs> For some reason, nobody wants them. I think it's because mines in the past just haven't been that useful. I've attempted to use them. Uh, sometimes the incendiary mines are very helpful on bug planets, but honestly, they just don't do enough to kind of help, you know, you, you never know where you're going to be. So if you place mines over here, but then the bug, the bug hole spawns over here, then you're kind of like, well, that was useless. So the anti-tank mines, like they could be super powerful. We have no idea, but they just don't pose that much of like a, Ooh, I need to get those. However, and I spoke with Dutch this morning, the old Dutch butter said, I'm having a hard time figuring out why I need to save those kids. <laughs> so <laughs> On one case, we could save kids and get nothing. Uh, or we could go to this planet, liberate it, and get ourselves some anti-tank mines. That is going to be the choice. I cannot wait to see how the player base reacts to this. Uh, we do have to liberate one planet first, which will probably take about a day, I'm assuming. Uh, we liberate uh, liberate Asir Pass, and then the player base gets to choose. Vernon Wells or Marfark. What is the choice going to be? Comment below what you are going to pick. Are you going to go save those kids? Or are you going to go for those anti-tank mines? I want to know because this is going to be hilarious. Anyway, I love the fact that this game is doing that too. It's like this, this crazy ultimatum where it's just like, yeah, save sick kids or go get some anti-tank mines. And I, I'm like, you know, I think we might actually get the anti-tank mines at this point. <laughs> but there might be something. Maybe there's something hidden. You know, maybe they're not telling us what we're going to get for saving the kids. What if we save the kids and it's like some freaking overpowered, dope-ass new weapon that we get to use in the new patch. Who knows, man? Who knows? I'm very curious to see myself. Um, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to pick because I feel like it needs to be left as a mystery. I don't know. Maybe we'll talk about it next week. We'll see where we end up. But um, yeah, the patch is, patch is coming on Thursday. So obviously, I, haven't, I can't talk about it today. I, I, there's a lot of speculation on what it's going to include. I'm not going to get into the details. I'll leave that for some other channels that do breakdowns daily about what's coming. Um, there's a lot of great ones out there. Go check them out. Shout out to Lieutenant Buzz Light Beer. Uh, he has a great channel dedicated to Helldivers. Uh, I love his content. He's super cool. Um, he does the, the serious breakdowns on the patches. Uh, I'll probably break something down next week with Dutch when he's back. Uh, but as for now, I just know that there's going to be over 100 fixes to the patch. We're going to get a new war bond, the uh, Viper Commandos, which looks dope. Honestly, it looks freaking really, really cool. I know uh, Dutch over here is a big fan of the uh, aesthetics. He loves having skins and types and different things to kind of play around with to make your character look cool. Um, we will be getting two new weapons. So we're getting, if, I, if I'm remembering this correctly, just off the top of my head, we're getting a, a secondary weapon, which is like a three-barreled shotgun called the Bushwhacker, I believe. And we're also getting a new Liberator Carbine. So those are going to be two new weapons that we got. I don't know if there's going to be more included in the Warbond or not, but those are the two that they advertised. And they both look pretty cool, pretty solid. I hope they work out. I hope they're um, I hope they're good when you actually use them. Well, we're not going to know until we see it. The Bushwhacker looks freaking cool, though. I'm not going to lie. Uh, and then one thing that everybody in our Discord is super excited about, though, is the um, the new throwing knife. 
So instead of a grenade, and I, it doesn't specify, it doesn't say if it's only grenades, like it takes up your entire grenade, so you get like four throwing knives or six throwing knives instead of grenades, or if it's like you get three grenades and one throwing knife. I'm not sure how it's going to play. If you know, comment, let us know uh, the details on that. But uh, regardless, I'm going to be really curious to see how this works out. I don't feel like it's going to match people's expectations. I think this knife is going to be a cool little gimmick. It might get you a couple kills here and there, but I do not think it's going to be powerful enough to do anything serious. But I cannot wait to see the videos of people attempting to use it to take down Titans and Chargers and Hulks and all this other stuff. Like if you can nail a Hulk right in the eyeball with a knife and it goes down in one drop, do you know how many how how epic the videos are going to be of the gameplay of people attempting to do that and sometimes succeeding? It's going to be amazing. I can't wait. Um I don't see this being super useful on the bot side because, you know, you're not going to throw a knife at a metal body like a Devastator. But if you get that headshot, man, I mean, why not? Why not try? You're desperate. You're out. Your ammo's gone. And all you have left is a freaking knife. And you just thunk that thing right in the dead in the center of the head. And it goes down. That'd be pretty epic. Um, we will see. We will see. I can't wait to play around with it and have some fun. Uh, the camo looks good. Looks like we get some new skins for the mechs. Also, we get some of that uh, commando camouflage going on. Um, it'll be fun, man. I'm looking forward to it, but I'm really more so looking forward to uh, what's in store for us in this patch. Um, I really hope that the more detailed map and and trade routes and and you know how to get to each planet the most efficiently way and 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 planet stats and stuff like that. I hope that ends up in the game. That's the most important thing to me. It just makes the game more playable. It kind of flushes everything out. Uh, we've had comments on our discord, like, oh, this patch is going to make the game feel like it's been in beta mode this whole time. So, I mean, who knows, man, that'd be really, really cool. If you would like to join the discussion on our discord, go to saltynerddiscord.com. It is a really awesome community. We have a lot of really cool people there and they're always looking for people to jump in and play with. Uh, so check us out over there. And if you do check us out and you're in the community and you're hanging out, uh, you, you could probably join either me or Dutch on a live stream at some point. We could play together and have a, have a great run. Uh, it's going to be a fun, fun, fun time. I cannot wait. Now, to end this segment, I know this episode is going to be a bit shorter than our normal podcast because, I mean, Dutch isn't here. I'm a little hungover, so I'm not really doing a full 30 minutes. But I do want to highlight a new segment that I want to do, and I'm going to be testing it out right here, right now, just for you. The new segment is Loadout of the Week. If you've been watching the podcast, you know that Dutch will highlight a Loadout of the Week on the podcast, and he reads off what they tell us to do. I'm going to spice it up a little bit and we're going to have a fun little segment. We're going to do a little video for it and uh, we're going to have some fun. So the new segment loadout of the week. This one is from Fob Hopper. Shout out to Fob Hopper in our discord. He says, this is for bug divers having a hard time with bots. Here's a simple loadout that makes you pretty difficult to kill and still effective at killing bots for the major orders. You're going to be running around with a submachine gun pummeler, a grenade pistol, or the senator, the six-round, uh, like, dirty hairy gun, impact grenades, or stun grenades, preferably stun, and we'll explain why here in a second. The ballistic shield for your strategy, your laser cannon, the eagle airstrike, and the 380 millimeter orbital barrage with the T4 upgrade. If you don't have the T4 upgrade yet, go with the orbital laser. Any fortified heavy armor or the enforcer medium armor with 129 armor rating. So this is how this loadout works. The ballistic shield will block all laser bolts from any enemy, including factory striders. Keep in mind, your shield might get knocked off, but you can just go pick it up again. Tanks and turrets can still kill you with a direct hit, but the pummeler with the shield and by extension the senator or the grenade pistol can all be fired with your shield up. And when you have your shield on your back, it will also protect you from shots being fired from behind while you're carrying hard drives or other objects. Stun grenades allow you to deal with hulks by switching to your laser cannon and shooting them in the eye slit or managing large bot drops, patrols, to make it more manageable. The laser cannon can destroy uh, anti-air cannons, mortar cannons, and can kill factory striders easily destroys the chin machine guns and shoot shoot the eye or the underbelly as a major weak spot. For those pesky gunships on those higher level difficulties, aim and focus for the single engine. Hulks, obviously the eye slit and the back heat sink. 
Tanks and turrets, same thing. Aim for that heat sink with that laser cannon, and it will destroy it. So that's it for Fob Hopper's heavy bot armored uh, loadout of the week. Thank you, Fob Hopper, for that. If you haven't been on the bot side very often, give that loadout a shot. Make sure you're hyper accurate with that laser cannon, though, because it does require you to hit those weak spots in order for it to work properly, but it will melt bots. All right, the next loadout is for the bug side. This is from Timo from our Discord. Thank you, Timo. This is called the Flame Throwing Maniac. Medic armor, preferably heavy, with a plasma punisher or the scorcher, a grenade pistol, and a stun grenade. For your stratagems, you're going to be loading out with the flamethrower, the supply backpack, the 500 kg eagle air airstrike, and the EMS mortar. This is what he has to say about this loadout. Stim early and often. It's why we bring the supply backpack. Pro tip. When you're not overwhelmed, let the little ankle biters hit you once. Then you'll be able to stim just as a dangerous encounter starts. You will survive a surprising amount of abuse. Your care <laughs> You will almost constantly be screaming out in pain, but you will also be laughing maniacally from melting bugs. Also, look forward to how the new stim booster works on the Viper Commando Warbond with the improved build. Will this improve the build even more? We shall see. So make sure you go try that out if you're on bug side. Uh, somebody like me, I'm not really good at fighting bugs. I don't really like it. Uh, I, I can do it if I have to. Um, I always like bringing the flamethrower, especially if you have that upgraded uh, arsenal on your ship. It allows the flamethrower to really take down those heavy uh, chargers and stuff like that at an aggressive rate. So check out that loadout. Thank you, guys. Um, Timo and Fob Hopper from our Discord. If you would like to join, go to Salty Nerd Discoid. <laughs> Discoid. SaltyNerdDiscord.com. Sign up over there. Join the discussion. Have a good time. We have a fantastic environment. We have, we love hanging out with our folks over in Helldiver side. There's always somebody playing. We've got fans from across the world. So if you're a night owl here on the West Coast and you're playing, you might be playing with somebody from the UK. It's a great time. Check it out. That being said, I think that's all I have for the podcast today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Make sure to tune in on Thursday. We will be doing a breakdown of the new patch. And also, Dutch Butters will be back next week, so look forward to his thoughts on the patch, the new war bond, and all the other stuff coming up on Tuesday after he gets back from his vacation from destroying another planet like he did Meridia. All right, that's it, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great weekend. Actually, a great week. I guess it's Tuesday, and uh, we look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Stay salty. Stay salty.